to enjoy the show. And now, on with the show. Our story begins on a magnificent bridge as a boy chances upon a bright-eyed girl gazing out upon the water. It is love at first sight. His name is Romeo of the House of Montague, hers Juliet of the House of Capulet. Their families have been feuding for generations, with no sign of their hatred waning. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or, if thou willest it, I shall cast aside mine. Call me but love, Juliet. And what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I love thee! I love thee, Romeo! More than aught in this world! And I thee, forever, even in the cold embrace of death. No! No! Romeo! Mine own life without yours is not worth living! Thou must livest with me until time itself expires. But the stars have other plans in mind. An unfortunate stabbing or two plunges their family's relations to a new low. A humble man of the cloth, Friar Lawrence, takes pity on the youths and comes to Juliet with an idea. Friar Lawrence, I am to be wed to a man I do not love! Doth no heart beat twixt my cruel father's bones? Is there no escape? No ploy to bring Romeo and I together as one? Take thou this vial and drink thou off. For two and forty hours thou shalt go stiff and stark and cold like death. Find thou this courage, and after thou art born to the crypt, thou shalt rise again and be with Romeo. Give me, give me, oh, tell not me of fear. If courage is the cost of my love for Romeo, may all fears fall upon me. Romeo, I will be with you soon. Alas, the letter that was to inform Romeo of their plan is lost en route by the messenger. After Juliet's servant, Balthazar, tells Romeo of her death, he sneaks into her family crypt, racked with grief. Oh, my love, death hath no power yet upon thy beauty, and yet never again shall I gaze into those deep pools that are thine eyes. Thus, with a kiss, I die. May we meet again in a world untouched by strife. Here's to my love. In his sorrow, Romeo takes a deadly poison and breathes his last breath. Then, and only then, does Juliet wake. Wherefore is life so cruel? Am 
am I truly to be denied the warmth of thy smile? The sweet melody of mine own name falling from thy lips? Such a life is no life at all. Wait for me, my love, for I will join you soon in a world for just us two. Soon after, word of the young lover's death reached their quarreling families. Although the tragedy brought the feud to a close, poor Romeo and Julia would never know. And thus, the curtain closes. Welcome, good patrons, one and all. Little Red Riding Hood went to visit her sweet grandmother with some cake and wine. Grandma, what are you doing in bed? Come closer, child, so I may get a good look at your face. Grandma, Grandma, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear. Grandma, Grandma, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. And Grandma, what a big mouth you have. But of course. The better to eat you with, my dear. And so poor Red Riding Hood was gobbled up by the wolf who, with a very full stomach, fell sound asleep. What is all that raucous snoring? Foul wolf, how dreadful! But perhaps it is not too late. Ugh, not again! And so, a hunter who chanced upon the cottage saved Red Riding Hood and her grandmother from the belly of the wolf. Lucky! Hunter guy! Nice heroics back there! You're welcome. That beast will trouble you no more. Let that be a lesson to you, dear. No more straying from the path. I hear ya, Grandma!
Welcome, good patrons, one and all. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful, kind-hearted, and super lucky girl named Cinderella. Oh, mother. After Cinderella's mother died. Oh. <laughs> You'll be okay, Cinderella. Her father's new wife and the woman's daughters moved into their home. But Cinderella's stepmother was cruel and her stepsisters jealous of the girl's beauty. Cinderella! Cinderella! Finish that cleaning at once! And then you can wash the dishes! There is much work to do and I will not tolerate your laziness! <laughs> Look at those filthy clothes! But I suppose they're perfect for a kitchen maid like you. Filthy, filthy Cinderella! Covered in grime and ashes. Then, one day, the prince of the kingdom proclaimed he was throwing a ball. Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters attended in their finest clothes, but they refused to take the poor girl along. Before the weeping child's eyes appeared a fairy! Ooh, what a twist! Come now, dear, don't cry. I shall give you the most lovely dress, and a pumpkin carriage, and mice for coachman, and you can go to the ball. Really? Oh, thank you. But remember, Cinderella, the magic will wear off when the clock strikes midnight. You must return home before then. And with that, the fairy gave Cinderella her final present, a beautiful pair of glass slippers. Cinderella was the center of attention at the ball. Even the prince was captivated by her beauty. Oh, what a splendid evening. But it will soon be midnight. I must away. Wait, fair maiden. The prince picked up the glass slipper and vowed to find the young woman to whom it belonged. That's my slipper, all right. It's certain to... Ooh, to fit. <laughs> Just make it fit, darling! But neither of the cruel stepsisters were able to get the slipper on. There's no way that's 
Cinderella could have attended that ball in those dirty rags. Filthy, filthy Cinderella. But lo and behold, when Cinderella tried the slipper on, it was a perfect fit. And so Cinderella and the prince were wed, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Welcome, good patrons, one and all. There once was a donkey who had grown too old to work anymore. His owner had a mind to stop feeding him, so the donkey decided it was time to run away. Putting the village behind him, he set out for town, determined to make it as a musician. Along the road, he came across an old dog. Hello! What's the matter, friend? You look so very tired. My master sent me away because I'm too old to go hunting with him anymore. Well, I have an idea. Why don't you come to town with me and we'll become musicians together? So, that's exactly what the two of them did. Further up the road, they met a cat, too old to catch mice, and a rooster that was going to be slaughtered for supper. And before long, their merry band of two had become a merry band of four. walked this far in ages. These days I spend more time rolling about beside the stove. Hey, look! I see light coming from those windows. Let's ask if we can stay the night. A fine idea, friend. Let's do just that. Now just hold on. Perhaps we should have a look first. Something smells funny to me. When the four animals peered into the house, they saw a band of robbers sitting down to a mouth-watering feast. <laughs> nice haul today, boys! Those crooks! 
Why do they get to eat and not us? I'd give anything to sink my teeth into that feast. I'm absolutely famished. If only we could chase the robbers away. Actually, I think I know just the trick. And what a delightful idea it was. The animals wasted no time in giving it a try. The dog climbed onto the donkey's back, the cat climbed onto the dog's back, and the rooster climbed onto the cat's back. All together now, friends! Eha! The robbers fled for their lives and never returned again. And the four animals, pleased with their yummy prize at Cozy House, forgot about music and decided to settle down for good. Without further ado, enjoy the show. This is the tale of the brilliant, kind, and decidedly unrapacious Isha, who successfully revitalized her town of New Nevea. Not so fast, you. The barrows are treacherous. You mustn't go inside. Blah, blah, blah. You can't stop CJ from doing whatever she pleases. Well, that's not very nice. You just leave this to me. The three of them started out like oil water, and something else that doesn't go with oil or water. But in time, they became fast friends. Follow my lead. 
Yeah, let's smack a bunch of enemies to death. We'll mop the floor with them. Yes, it was a tale of action, adventure, but also heartwarming moments. Wow, Isha. You're such a great cook on top of everything else. Why, thank you. It's a delicacy from New Nevea. Inexpensive, but quite delicious. And that's what really matters. Don't be shy. Eat up. Eat up. Mm. Oh. This, this is a delicacy that no one can afford to miss. Everybody should visit New Nevea so they can stuff themselves silly. And then, at long last, a final showdown with their nemesis. <laughs> Insert exposition here. You will never thwart my evil plans. Stand back, everyone. You have done enough already. I must face him alone, even if it costs me my life. What are you saying, you selfless, amazing person? You promised we'd be together always. Indeed. We shall live, us three, and find power in the bonds of friendship. Enough. Have you resigned yourself to your fate? Do your worst, fell sorcerer. In the name of love and justice and the holy sword Astra, I will vanquish thee. <laughs> Whatever will become of Isha and her merry companions? If you want to know how their story ends, then book a trip today to the land of dreams and adventure, New Nevea. Gorge yourself on fine cuisine, take in the breathtaking scenery, receive free stamps, don't just visit, Stay forever. Wonder if it's a good fishing spot, too. Brought to you by the new Nevea Restoration Bureau. The stage is always set. <laughs>